What's up everyone, Pags here at MEI Studios. This week we've got a viewer request. Uh, Mike from a company I'd heard a little about maybe five years ago or so, but had completely forgotten about. I'm talking about Austrian Audio and their OC16 mic. Let's take a quick dive into the company and then check the mic out. We can't really talk about Austrian Audio before we first talk about the ashes from which they arose. Those ashes had at one time had the most venerable names in audio. That name is Acoustica und Kino Grata Gesellschaft, or simply AKG. Apologies to anyone watching that speaks German for that and any other future pronunciation train wrecks. AKG was formed in 1947 by Dr. Rudolf Gorica and Ernest Pless. The company started out producing and furnishing cinema products like projectors, speakers, light meters, and quickly moved on to make carbon elements for telephones and started a headphone line. By 1952, AKG had filed patents for moving coil technology used in microphones. The D12 was born and considered to be one of, if not the first, cardioid moving coil microphone. The mic was an instant success and set the bar for sound quality pretty high. The next year, AKG would release one of the greatest mics of all time, the C12, and was tasked with creating a variant for Telefunken, the ELAM251. The company was on a roll and continued to produce outstanding products. In 1984, the company went public and were selling stock on the Vienna Stock Exchange. As with most great companies, going public was the beginning of the end for what had been a trusted and highly regarded brand. Ten years later, the company was bought out by Harman. I guess the saying, don't let Harman run your company, hadn't been invented yet. By 2016, Harman, by then owned by Samsung, announced that in 2017 they'd be closing the Austrian offices and moving office jobs to California, and production of much of its line to China. The company laid off an estimated 650 workers. Out of those 650, 22 workers banded together to form a new company that would dedicate themselves to the old ways of innovation that had been the hallmark of AKG for over a half century. Thus, in 2017, Austrian Audio was formed. The company, with Martin Seidel at the helm, quickly dedicated themselves to reproducing one of the most revered mic capsules in history, the CK-12. There's a common myth that the original CK-12 is all brass, and from my research, rather than just listen to internet people, isn't exactly true. Apparently, the original capsule had a plastic isolator in it, just like the modern retakes of the capsule. The ring that fits on the outside had been changed from plastic to metal and back over the years, but how much that part actually contributes to the sound of the mic, I can't and won't say until I can try an identical pair using the two different methods. The capsules are produced and tuned in Austria with some of the parts outsourced. Their first mic on the market was a dual diaphragm, dual output mic, very reminiscent of the Townsend mic technology and actually includes software that is open source and can be used by any dual diaphragm mic that's out on the market. I'll leave a link to the software in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Aimed at the professional market, the OC818 hit the street around 1200 USD. In addition, Austrian Audio has a complete line of headphones as well as some dynamic microphones that have some unique features. The company quickly put together a more budget-friendly version of the 818 using a single capsule design, but of the same quality. The OC18 and the OC16 were unveiled, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Coming in at around 350 to 400 USD, the OC16 uses a handmade ceramic single diaphragm which provides the user with a single cardioid polar pattern. This mic has a selectable three-position high-pass filter switch. Its settings of zero or off, 40 hertz and 160 hertz, help to reduce any low-end rumble while recording. There's no pad on this mic, which is included in the mid-tier OC18. This isn't an issue to me since I usually tend to pad the mic at the pre if needed anyway, but it's not always an option for everyone. The OC818 has a whole slew of options, which include dual output, Bluetooth for remote pattern control, a slider for pattern settings on the mic face itself without using Bluetooth, a pad switch, and a high-pass filter. I'm really interested in checking out the OC818 in the near future, but since we were specifically asked about the OC16, I figured it'd be great to get our feet wet with the company and see if what they were offering for a low mid-price point was enough to whet my appetite for something more robust. So what's included with this mic? For starters, the mic. It's always good, but apparently not always guaranteed. There's a swivel mount, a shock mount, which has a metal insert for the stand connection, 
A couple of mount adapters, one for both the swivel mount and the shock mount, which are essentially useless in the US market. A really nice soft covered hard case, and of course a sticker. Let's talk about the shock mount for a minute. First, I love that there's a metal insert on the connection. AKG, nothing? Anyway, the construction seems solid, but there's something here I'm not a fan of. They attempted to do something similar to what AKG did for the H85 mount, which is the 414 style shock mount, and that they have this hole down here that the stem of the mic is supposed to fit into. Then you tighten with a large metal tightening nut at the bottom. While I appreciate the secure, snug fit, getting the mic through this hole, even with the tightening nut off completely, is quite the chore. Since the insert is rubber, I'm going to assume that this will eventually wear a bit and this will get easier over time. And maybe that's the idea, so that the mount and the design of choice here will last a bit longer. On to the mic. It's a solid weight, all metal. The grill and body seem to be a little on the resonant side, which I'm never a big fan of. The capsule seems to be suspended on a three-way shock mounting system, which is pretty unique and a great way to reduce handling noise. Not that you'd ever be holding this mic. The grill itself seems to suffer from what I call the pricklies. Companies that chrome plate their grills and overdo it tend to have these little sharp burrs all over from the plating process. Many times this is just a manufacturing mistake and not indicative of every mic off the line. And again, you really would not ever be handling or stroking the grill of this thing, but it's an aesthetic thing that could probably be addressed by tighter quality control. The grill seems to be a two-ply cross pattern with a thicker plated mesh on the outside, which is somewhat wide spaced, and a very thin mesh on the inside that's also widely spaced. This will allow for the mesh to contribute less to the overall frequency response of the mic on the top end. This is a happy medium between being overdone and underdone. I reached out to the company to get some comments from them on the aesthetic choices for this mic, as well as to get some other information about a week ago now. It's part of the reason that this video is late, but they've yet to respond to my email and I'm not going to let that push this video off anymore. If they get back to me, I'll include their response in a future video should we decide to review any of the other offerings. We're going to put a pair over the piano and compare it to the AKG 414XL2 and our C12 clone, which uses a handmade reproduction of the CK12 capsule. We've had the chance to shoot out our C12 clone with an original C12 many years ago and I was extremely happy with the results. My shootout with the Townsend model put the clone pretty close to the C12 model there as well, so I figured it's a worthy comparison. Next, I'm going to put the mic up on an acoustic guitar, and finally, a first, female vocal test. Let the shootout begin. I've got eyes in my veins Now there's murder on my brain And I try to keep my cool But all I can see is you and her I've got
All right, I'm interested in hearing your take on this. Has this company brought a new point of Austrian pride to the market or did they fall short? Does this first foray into their offerings warrant a deeper dive into their product line? Please leave me some feedback and tell me your thoughts. While you're at it, please hit like and subscribe if you got anything from today's video so we can continue to bring you videos every week or so. And if you're interested in being notified when we put up a new video, hit that notification button. Well, that's it for this time. This is Pags, signing off.